Mars is literally crawling with microbes. NASA ain't admitting it just yet. And they won't admit it until they have sampled it to a scientifically thorough and bureaucratically conservative death. <laughs> Trouble is, there's old Occam's razor staring the JPL kids right in the face. Remember from science class being surprised it wasn't something from Mr. Occam's barbershop? You see, Occam's razor boils down to this. It states that if you have several competing explanations for a given natural event, then the one that makes the fewest assumptions is the most likely to be correct. And when Occam combs through the overwhelming evidence from past Mars missions, like the Viking landers of the 1970s, Martian meteorites with fossilized microbes, seasonal methane plumes, massive patches of seasonally darkening soil, abundantly available water now and certainly in the Martian past. The soil with plenty of nutrients and carbon sources. And especially when these facts are coupled with the new Curiosity rover findings, well, the old geezer has to conclude, we are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Okay, even if we're only sharing the solar system with tiny sewer gas belching microbes. These Martian critters do seem to be everywhere on the red planet. And they are brewing up a bunch of gas called methane. Yep. Cows and college kids do it. And it is highly flammable. As one of my frat brothers painfully proved beyond a shadow of doubt. <laughs> of course, it's not just about freaking hilarious frat pranks. Let's get serious for a second. NASA's Curiosity rover is the car-sized mobile science lab that's been driving around inside Gale Crater on Mars since an amazing sky crane deposited it. Curiosity, it seems, cannot swing a robotic arm without hitting a pocket of organically derived molecules near the surface of the damp crater soil it's rolling over. Sure, that raises all sorts of profound philosophical, religious, and scientific questions surrounding the implications. But, more importantly, doesn't it make you wonder what the heck these things look like? What do they eat? Where do they live? On the surface? Under rocks? In subterranean caves? How do they live? Do they have sex and make baby Martian microbes? What TV shows do they watch? Old Andy Griffith shows? What music's on their iPod? No doubt, Elton John's Rockin' Man. Truth is, we have some pretty good ideas what they look like, and that's because we see virtually identical types of live and fossilized microbes right here on terra firma. In 1996, a group of scientists led by David McKay at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston published an article in the journal Science. The paper announced biogenic evidence in a meteorite NASA found in Antarctica. The evidence was fossilized squigglies deep inside this rock. This rock was confirmed to have been blasted off Mars millions of years ago. And, because it was found inside the Antarctic deep freezer, it was not likely to have been contaminated with Earth bacteria. So, a good guess is that the Martians look virtually identical to small microbes that we have here on Earth. We call them methanogenic magnetotactic nanobacilia. Huh? In other words, you can't see them with the naked eye because they are less than a millionth of a meter long. They look like tiny cigars, and they are spewing out fart gas. In fact, just like their Earth cousins, the only reason you can see them at all after these millions of years is that when they were squirming their way around in the warm, wet Martian mud millions of years ago, they had lots of tiny magnets inside their simple bodies. These same little magnets that help guide their way in life now mark their graves in death. We find these sorts of magnets and bacteria living today on Earth. And we see them in Minnesota fossils that date back as far as almost 2 billion years ago. We call them magnetite crystals. Using this abundant food, the minerals, and the water supply that surround them, they make a bunch of methane and other organic molecules. And when things warm up in the Martian summer along the equator, tons of this frozen gas spew into the Martian atmosphere in the form of localized gas geysers. Since they're not photosynthetic, these Martians ain't green. The weather on Mars probably doesn't bother them much. Curiosity is finding rather balmy 43 degree days, but minus 93 degree nights while it climbs down around in Gale Crater. No surprise, really, since Earth microbes are found in deep subterranean habitats, living quite comfortably, cranking out methane and glacial ice cores when samples retrieve from three kilometers under Greenland's glaciers. Hard to say whether they have sex or not, some on Earth do, but with minus 93 degree nights, whew, I don't know. Maybe they should follow the brilliant lead of my frat brother and occasionally light one off. For all I know, they do. Ah!